Oh my, oh my god. god, hey! I am Sarah, I'm playing girl. I'm Thomas and I'm playing guy in Once a Musical. At the Barn Theatre, Siren Sester. From July 3rd to, to August, August 12th. <laughs> and you're watching Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey! Welcome back to my theatre-themed YouTube channel. I'm in my parents' camper van right now because uh, I'm visiting my family and there's a barbecue happening and this seemed like the best place to film at the time. But now it's occurring to me it's weird that I'm in a camper van and also it's really warm, so I'm going to try and keep this brief. This video today was introduced by the cast of the upcoming revival of Once at the Barn Theatre in Sirencester. They did a little press launch the other day where they invited some of us to go and check out the rehearsals for the show and chat to the cast and creative team where we found out that this is going to be a very different production of the show. So I thought I would let them tell you why this version of Once might be a little bit different. The most important thing is this is Once. So we are absolutely honouring the production, the what was written, the music that was written, but we're just sort of giving our own little slant on it. It's got the same heart. It's got the exact same heart and the same spirit, the same words. Like We're looking up, we love these characters and this story is really important and it remains like true to uh, the, the t if you know it before so we can't we could never recreate that we would do a really bad job of recreating it so the plan was to walk in the barn do what can this team this creative team what can this company put together you know we've been having a really great time making it so I, I think I think that will hopefully come across to the audiences as well I started watching a lot of uh, Coldplay gigs, big arena gigs, uh, James Bay, Jeff Buckley, um, Ed Sheeran, those kind of ideas that can, can be on an acoustic guitar in someone's bedroom and also at Wembley Stadium, 50,000 people, however many thousand people. What they can expect from the show is a very fresh take on a beautiful show that everyone knows and loves with some surprises, some new musical takes. We've been sort of contemporising it and making it fresh and they've sort of fused a lot of the world of today's music a lot of the world that we you know we see at a gig and that's what this world is all about it's about that sort of dream gig that we all hope to do and then this beautiful interwoven story of going back to the script and going, okay, what's on the page? What can we use? Mm. What perhaps are the hidden stories within this show that haven't quite been told yet? And with this production, we want it to have the ability to go anywhere. It can be in an intimate space like the barn, or it can be in a big arena, or it can be in a, in a sort of mid-scale theatre and still have that sense of scale and sort of rock and roll energy. You know. <laughs> Now, as I got the chance to chat to some of the cast members, I wanted to ask them what rehearsals have been like uh, and what it's been like putting this show that's all about like making music as an ensemble together, how that's been. But also, I thought that not many of you would necessarily know about the Barn Theatre in Sirencester, so I wanted to ask the creatives and you and the artistic director about what it is that makes the venue so special. The vibe is um, really, really just encouraging and um, fresh. I mean, it's been really cool to like create everything everything um, with the team it's felt like my friend over here Tom said very fresh very new as you would have had today little snippet <laughs> is absolutely superb um, and what Alex and Dom have done with the music has been amazing. It's an incredibly touching story that is very well written and it's about the power of love, relationships and music. When you have a blank sheet of paper to be creative that's very difficult. The barn is so small, it's so quirky that actually you've got to be thinking outside the box as cliche as that sound to actually put shows on there. Why be limited by the structure 
why be limited by the size of the space? Why be limited by the size of the company? Because I think ultimately, if you can be creative, you can solve most problems. You can tell the biggest stories, you can tell the smaller stories. It's a very intimate space that can capture a sense of scale, even though it's small. It kind of it has the ability to kind of have that perspective shift where you can take it to outer space and the stratosphere, but then take it all the way down to something really, really small and intimate, like a play, you know. This is a huge show for the barn. This is the, one of the biggest shows we've ever done. And the challenge of being able to barnify this particular story is an exciting one. And I, I can't wait to see it come to fruition. Like I said earlier, I am seeing a lot of this for the first time today. I've only been there for the conceptual chats with Dom. And I'm just so thrilled and excited to see how it all pans out. <laughs> And finally, if you know any of my interviews, you know there always has to be a silly question. So I wanted to know, what is something that the company and creatives of once had only done once? There must be something. I've got engaged. So that was the first time I've got engaged. So that's an absolute first for me. I've only abseiled <laughs> once. Oh. And, 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 it, and that's what made me develop a fear of heights. That's why I only have ever done it once. Only one, and then never again? No, never again. I've only shaved my head once. Have you? This is the first time I've ever done this. Would you Would you do again, or is this? I'm gonna have to uh, for the next <laughs> two months or so. Like, uh, um, yeah, yeah, maybe. So I went skiing in Tehran. Okay. I went skiing in Tehran with a headscarf okay. around me and nearly strangled myself going down the slope because I fell over and I got caught up. So never again. I've only been in a natural body of water once, and it was last summer in Lake Como. Why, why, why only once? I don't know. I, I, sharks and that. I've swam with sharks once. No, I mean, I think I would do it again. But what I'm, I'm going to go with food. <laughs> and I've only ever once eaten jelly deals. Ooh. And I won't eat them again. Not, not delicious. When in Rome? When in Rome? No, when in, when in East London. <laughs> were grey nurse sharks, they weren't like great whites, but uh, it's, it's still sharks as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> so, I mean, so I've done that once and uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. <laughs> Thank you so much to the cast and creative team of Once for giving me so much of their time. I hope that's given you a flavour of the show and if you're interested in it, make sure to book tickets. I'll put a link in the description of this video. Now you're about to see the rest of the week that I've just had, including a gala performance of Mrs Doubtfire the Musical, which opened this week in the West End, a trip to Bath for another new musical, a couple more very exciting press events and a backstage tour of a musical. Now before I launch you into this video I do have to apologize because there's an audio issue with some of the clips where I'm speaking from behind the camera. It's a setting that I changed on Wednesday because I lent my microphone out for an event and then I unfortunately I can't fix it in post but next time you see a video it should all be fixed so apologies there are a few clips for the most part it's me describing stuff you're seeing anyway but I apologize that the audio is not ideal on some of those. Otherwise I hope you enjoy Enjoy this week's episode of Oh My God Hey. Oh my God, hey! Hello! Hi. <laughs> we are all in London today. Yes. On this lovely Sunday. Yes. I'm liking the breeze. This is welcome. It's a Sunday fun day. It's a Sunday fun day. Oh, it's a fun <laughs> Sunday day. I don't know. Um, and we are all wearing blue Dabu Dee Dabu Da because we are on our way to the Father's Day gala performance of uh, just Doubtfire the musical, Mrs. I Doubtfire think they the musical. They changed it to Doubtfire and then they changed it back to Mrs. Doubtfire, I think. Mrs. But colon the Doubtfire musical <laughs> <laughs> at the Shaftesbury Theatre. We're heading over now for the gala performance. We just went to the uh, My Old Dutch Pancake House. Got confusing names today. To get some pancakes, cut to the pancakes. Cut to the pancakes. Are you cutting to the pancakes? Cut to the pancakes. <laughs> Cut to the pancakes. Cut. You want pancakes? We got pancakes. I've got Nutella, bananas, and nuts, but that is nothing compared to what Aaron James has over here. What is going on here? We have Smarties, we have Nutella, we have chopped nuts. It's all happening. Ellie's got a waffle. Pan, pan, pancakes. <laughs> Cut back from the pancakes. Back from the pancake. How good were those pancakes? Very good pancakes. Okay, stop saying pancakes. <laughs> I said it too many times. Yes, yeah, it's, it's got to that point. <sighs> we're slightly frazzled. We've got about 15 minutes until, or 20 minutes until the show starts. We're going to head over 
and go and pick up our tickets for the gala performance. Completely new musical to all of us, no idea what to expect. Mm -hmm. um, so <laughs> we're going to find out. Hello, we're inside the theatre. We have our tickets and there's a photo spot. I don't know if I'm meant to be like this way or like this way. Like it's, a, like it's a buddy cop comedy and together we may solve crimes. I don't know. Now cross your arms. So just beyond the box office we have the merchandise, same place it was for And Juliet. We've got a fan here that says Hello London. We have some other bits and pieces. We have key rings, we have fridge magnets, we have enamel pin badges. We've got a water bottle there and you can see prices of everything as shown here. These are our programs, everything is nice and blue. You've got t-shirts going on here, sort of a subtler logo t-shirt there, and then one with the London skyline. I love that. We've got a tote bag, we've got mugs, lots of merchandise on offer from Doubtfire. We are in the lovely newly renovated Stalls Bar, which is underneath street level. That light coming from above is the street outside the theatre, and we have complimentary Prosecco for this afternoon's gala performance. Someone cheers me. Hey, everyone's doing it. It is just slightly manic, as these things often tend to be. I'm glad I did this, because I forgot I was wearing sunglasses. I must take these off. Um, but yeah, very busy down here. I've just seen Faye from Steps. And I kind of want to introduce uh, myself to her by pointing out that we're all wearing blue, but I'm wearing a deeper shade of blue. <laughs> and that's why I shouldn't be allowed to talk to celebrities. Okie dokie, we're in P12 and 13. This is our view of the stage. Again, all very blue for Mrs. Doubtfire. A tricky show curtain to photograph, I will say, but tricky but not impossible. Also, Hugh Grant is down there. Not to full paparazzi, but there he is. And Sue Pollard is in the box. Linda Robson and Leslie Joseph. Linda Robson and Leslie Joseph. God, it's all going on. Okay, full celeb spotting update. Um, multiple loose women. Hugh Grant. Oh, I thought I saw Piers Brosnan, but it's just a man that looks like Piers Brosnan. I wonder if he gets that a lot. Sue Pollard's in the box. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see Leslie Joseph. Yeah, there uh, she is. Linda Robson. TikTok stars Hannah Lowther um, and Chris Olsen. That's exciting to me. I'm still wearing sunglasses. Someone make me take off these sunglasses. Take off your sunglasses Hugh Grant is here. Hi, um, Lots of industry types. Ah, 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 ah. There we go. I can see, except I'm short sighted, so I can't. So I need my, my regular glasses. So here we are, gala performance just finished. Um, people are holding umbrellas because it's kind of raining, but it's not so bad. Um, and there's a few things uh, that I want to show you. First of all, this marquee. So the Shaftesbury Theatre was all pink for Anne Juliet. Now it is very blue. We've got this little sparkly, sort of a prism situation. No, it's not a prism, it's a trapezium. A sparkly trapezium. A trapezium of sequins for the Mrs. Doubtfire marquee. Hello, London. And we have this lovely area here that's opened. There's been redevelopment work going on here for years. Um, but this will be lovely when it's done and it's a nice space pre or post show. There you go. Mrs. Dutfeyer. <laughs>Oh my god, hey! Hello! I look like a Playmobil person. For anyone who has been following the last few, like the start of this week's Oh my god, hey, and last week's, I need a haircut, my hair is too long, and I've been experimenting with different ways of, uh, of not having a haircut yet. And today's is called Boy Band 2010's One Direction. This, it's got, this is, fun fact, this is what happens to my hair when I do nothing to it. There you go, there you go. Uh, we're in Woking today. 
Woking, comma, Surrey? Yeah. yeah, I think it's still sorry. I think it's still sorry. Um, is it too late? Is it too late now to say sorry? <laughs> sorry with a fringe on top. Sorry with a fringe on top. It all comes back. Uh, but yeah, we're here in Woking, That's heading awesome. to the new Victoria Theatre, the one in a shopping centre. I've taken you before, but it's been a while since we've come to Woking because uh, we've just been too busy with other press nights. <laughs> Always clashes. Even tonight there is a clash, but we are here uh, to see Annie. Annie, uh, UK tour. <laughs> And I was just telling you a moment ago yes. that the last time I saw this production, I've only seen it once before, mm. I saw all of it except the last five minutes of the first act and the first five minutes of the second act because I was working as an usher at this theatre. I didn't work here very long, but um, I think this was the only musical I worked a shift for <coughs> while I was here. So I saw it, this production, this tour, last time it came around while ushering, and now I'm returning to the same theatre in a professional capacity. It's a full circle moment for me today, everyone. Uh, but it's not a big deal. I'm just excited to come and see Annie. You haven't seen this production. I haven't. I just always call it the Annie that was inspired by Matilda. It is Annie that looks a bit like Matilda. Yeah, it's that one. Is it? It's uh, Nikolai, isn't it? Nikolai? Yeah, yeah. Nikolai Foster. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so and yes. more good March, I think. I think so. I think you're right. Yes. Uh, so we're going to head on up the stairs to the top of the shopping centre where the theatre is and go pick up our press tickets and go see Annie. It's unnervingly quiet in this shopping centre today. Very little going on. And here it is. At the top of the shopping centre you get... Da -da 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 -da. Wait for it. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Gotta walk upstairs. There we go. Here it is, over here, the new Victoria Theatre. Okay, here's what happened. There was a line for merch. There is a line for merch. And I was like, I can't film the merch right now. I just walked past the merch. And then I saw that they are selling a plush dog Sandy toy. And I got back into line for the merch because I'm not, I can't not buy that. It has to happen. I'm getting the dog, everybody. Okay, Dekka, we're enjoying an interval wine because the moments before the show started were hectic and busy. But look who I've purchased. <laughs> this is Sandy. He does speak. I can't, hold on, hold on. If you squeeze his paw. I'm hoping you can hear him because he's a very quiet and timid dog. Just before the second act begins, this is our view of the stage. I'm in F36. We've got jigsaw puzzle pieces going on. It is a little bit Annie uh, that looks like Matilda. You'd be forgiven for, for seeing that comparison, but these are meant to be like NYC road signs, all these puzzle pieces lit up here. I'm enjoying myself. So is Sandy the dog. He's my new best friend. <laughs> oh, oh, don't lick the camera. Don't lick the camera, Sandy. Good boy. The sun will come out tomorrow. Although it's not all the way dark yet. It's not dark yet. No, we've just finished an evening show. It's, what, 10? It's Samsung. The time is Samsung because I turned my watch off in the theatre because I'm responsible, but it hasn't turned back on. So the time is a mystery to me. Uh, we just saw Annie. Yeah. Could be before 10. That was a fast show. <laughs> it's very quick. They were getting through it. They were like, Annie, she's getting adopted. No, she's not. No, she's here. No, she's there. It's 9.52. It's 9.52. There you go. 9.52 it yeah. is. Um, didn't film the curtain call. Kind of seemed like the kind of show where people probably do. Um, but I didn't get explicit permission to do so because all that says outside the auditorium is like no filming no photography and I didn't get the chance to ask anyone and for a show with lots of kids on the stage I feel like I need explicit permission to uh, film so <coughs> didn't um, but they all bowed and they sang tomorrow and it was beautiful <coughs> and yeah had a nice evening mm. had a nice time um, creepy statues <laughs> yeah, they're all around here. Oh, okay. Always the creepy statue surprised me in Woking. Uh, but yes, I enjoyed seeing that and I enjoyed seeing the end of the first act. You know what I realised? Because I sat there in the first act thinking, I don't know how this ends. And it's because I've never seen the end of the first act before. Because I've only ever seen the films, which have no act break. Or when I saw this tour when I was working as an usher, I had to leave to go get my ice cream tray. So there you go. I'm happy to have now seen the end of the first act and the start of the second. Of Annie, I've now seen the whole show. Yay! We're going to go home now. Thank you for joining us for Annie. Also, I'm kind of dressed appropriately because I've got like the red collar situation, but it was an accident because I got dressed in two minutes. So I finished filming a video and then we had to run out of the flat. So this is all happy accident. I'm going to go home now. Goodbye. Oh my god, hey! Hello. You find us on a sunny afternoon 
in Bath. Yeah. Sat outside of uh, Mrs. Potts chocolate shop. One of our first stops. Always. Every time we arrive to Bath, always. Gluten free cookie sandwich, like the best. Your exact words before we got here were, I've been dreaming about this. I miss it, because it's not that often we come to Bath. I've gone for a raspberry and white chocolate blondie, which has chocolate sauce drizzled over the top, which I didn't even know was an option, um, and I'm very excited about eating it. This is Aaron's. Very messy. How cool is that? Cookie sandwich. And this. Mm. I don't know if you can. See, there we go. White chocolate blondie, goodness. I'm very excited. That's a nice classical guitar going on in the square, overlooked by big old church. Slow zoom, slow zoom on the big old church. Before anyone asks me, I know it's called the Abbey. The Abbey, big old landmark in Bath, and the Roman Baths to our left. <coughs> to our left are the Roman Baths. I will pan to them, there you go. I mean, they don't look much from the outside. But they are there. We're on our way to our next obligatory bath stop, which is the fudge kitchen. I don't know if we'll buy... Last two times we were here, we bought whole slabs of fudge each, because it's amazing. Um, I don't know if we'll get any this time, if we'll just get some samples. You've got to get the samples. Yeah. You can't come to bath. Pride flag. And not, they've got a pride flag in the window, as if I didn't already love these people. Here it is, the fudge kitchen. Abby's there, baths and fudge. Everything you need in bath. I mean, I don't know what I thought would happen when we went into the fudge kitchen, if not us getting more fudge. Obviously we bought some fudge. We've gone for a chocolate swirl slab and we tried a dark chocolate and sea salt, I think. I think that was the first one we had, which is really nice. Yeah, I normally turn my nose up at a dark chocolate, uh, but really nice. And then we tried some of the birthday cake, which I have had before and is quite sickly sweet, but works for me, works for me. And then for dinner, we have come to the Cozy Club, where we are enjoying Cherry Bakewell cocktails, our favorites. I can drink this by the pitcher, and I usually do. And this is a buttermilk fried chicken that I am going to be enjoying. And Erin has the sea bass. Lovely, feeling fancy. Very nice. And here we are. This is the Theatre Royal Bath. We were talking about Theatre Royals the other day uh, when we were at the Theatre Royal Windsor. And this one is Bath. And here is the poster for Roman Holiday, the new Cole Porter musical, if you can believe such a thing. But beautiful poster design of iconic scene from the film. Not that I've seen this film, don't hate me, neither's Aaron, uh, but we are, it's the one with the Vespa. That much we know. That much we know. We're gonna go inside now and go and get our tickets. And just before we begin, we're in the lovely auditorium of the Theatre Royal Bath, and this is the preset for Roman Holiday. With a good old Virgin Mary. I can't quite make out what's going on on these walls, but again, I do not know this film. So likely this would mean more to me if I did. Are those real candles? No, no they are not. That is one thing I have gleaned. I'm going to let the show happen now and I'll find out more about it. I've just spotted, I've just spotted these other bits of set. Look, we have windows with shutters. You can tell it's European and we have lights, dangling lights. Well, this is going to be fun, I think. Also, we're sat in H1 and 2 of the stalls. And if I zoom all the way back out, this is fully our view. Nice little aisle to our left, but if anyone's wondering if H1 and 2 are a bit too wide to get a good view, it's absolutely fine because it's a thin auditorium. In fact, there are seats to our left because there's this gallery level just up there. We've just had press drinks in this this bar in the stalls. Sean is here, everybody. Hi, Sean. You look so happy. Uh, but it's like it's like underground, like cavernous bar situation in Bath. I'm fascinated and intrigued and a little bit in love. See, look, look at this. I'm heading back up to the stalls now, but like proper like underground bar and restaurant situation. I'm going back into the auditorium now. Oh my god, hey, it's the end of the evening. We're back from the theater. That was a very early show and a very short show. So like, we were leaving the theater at I think 9.04. So we got back very early, which is always nice. Looks like I'm in like uh, heaven right now or the beginning of Sunday in the Park with George, but I'm not gonna accidentally nearly cosplay as Orpheus from Hades Town and not give you a corridor runway presentation. Aaron's already gone to bed, but I have neckerchief thing here, because it was Roman holiday. And so like, this is more French looking than Italian, but I was like, holiday vibes, going to Bath, sunny, holiday, nice day. This is probably very echoey, I apologize. Um, nice floaty linen shirt that desperately needs an iron. Sorry, mum. And bam, bam, 
burgundy pinstripe trouser that speaks to the neckerchief uh, with sunglasses. You're going to have to imagine the whole vibe. And today's solution to needing a haircut but not having yet had one is this. This going on. This is called... I got out of the shower and work out what my hair wanted to do and did that. Did that. I don't hate it, but also it's very warm and I do just need a haircut. And you can still see that's a line on my forehead. I've put green colour correct on and you can still see it. That is the sunburn. It's just going to turn into tan, but then there will still be a tan line. So I need to need to try and sort this out. Suggestions in the comments, please. I'm going to bed now. I will see you tomorrow for a fun activity, but I'll see you tomorrow. Oh my god, hey, it's me again in the camper van. I was so excited about going to this press event, you're about to find out what it was, uh, that I failed to do a proper introduction. So what happened here is we got invited to go and meet the cast members of the SpongeBob musical outside the South Bank Centre, where they will be performing this summer to do a little bit of a beach clean. At the SpongeBob musical, we think it's important to promote environmental action and sustainable choices wherever possible. So we thought today, with your help, we do a little underwater cleanup. And it makes even more sense because we'll be right over there, not at the National, at the South Bank. <laughs> so if you guys are going to join us with our beach cleanup, we're here at the South Bank Centre, which will be here from July 26th until August 27th. So a long, long time in the summer. So make sure that you guys have some little pictures from our team or some gloves and you can get down to the beach and do some good things for the environment, people. So yeah. Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! Here we are, we've made it down onto this sort of beachy area. More beach than I was anticipating, actually, on the banks of the Thames today. Not too bad, not too bad. <laughs> we've, we've made a friend, we've made a friend, everybody. Made a friend. It's SpongeBob. SpongeBob is joining us for the beach clean. You excited to be here today? <laughs> Thoughts on climate change? <laughs> he's, got, he's got a lot to say. And here we are in full force, helping the environment, doing a bit of litter picking on the banks of the Thames, helping to make it nice. We're here to do like press interviews and stuff, which we are doing, but we're just getting really into the beach clean. Aaron's got one of these going on going on I keep finding bits of plate and I'm like is it the same plate so I'm like anyone else who finds plate bring it my way look there's another bit of plate I'm gonna show you this hot off the press here we go here we go can we talk about this dungaree microphone hack first of all uh, look a bit of plate have you got a bit of plate <gasps> put it in the bag put it in the bag Plate, it looks quite plate. Listen, we recently moved into a new home. We can glue this back together. That's a new plate for us. Easy. <laughs> Bit of glass. There you go. Get that off the beach. Oh my God. Hey, it's me, Lewis Cornet. Oh my God. Hey, my <laughs> name is Chrissy Bieber and I play Sandy Cheeks. And I am Thea Reese, and I play Larry the Lobster. We're doing a SpongeBob themed beach clean today. Yeah, we are. Okay, this next part merits explanation. I explained it to the cast, but I didn't get this on camera. So there's this old interview clip of Tyra Banks interviewing Beyonce. And the way she does it is she just says things that rhyme with her name and uses that as prompts for interview questions. Like she'll be like, Beyonce, what's your favorite type of cheese? And so being, you know, the serious professional journalist that I obviously am, um, I thought that would be a great way to interview the cast of the SpongeBob musical. So enjoy. This is maybe one of the best interviews I have ever done. SpongeBob wear pants. <laughs> what has been your favorite tour stop? Cardiff, <laughs> Millennium Centre, incredible, beautiful, lovely audiences. Bradford. Bradford. I want to go Birmingham. <laughs> that came straight to my head, but yeah. <laughs> Birmingham is my home venue. Nice, which is where we saw the show. We saw the show in Birmingham. Really? Oh yeah, of course, press night. Yeah. Yes. Oh, there you go, and Aaron's from the West Midlands. Oh, oh that's nice. SpongeBob scare pants. What is the most? Is so what is the most intimidating thing you've ever had to do on stage? Sing Simple Sponge. Absolutely, every time is absolutely terrifying and I try and be so cool about it, but it freaks me out. And you sing it so well. I know I do. <laughs> <laughs> Probably when it came to lift and I had to literally do all the cells <laughs> that time. <laughs> that was intimidating. I think mine is going to be when I had to jump onto two pianos and every night I thought if I fall, because it was like on like a lifted platform as well. And I was like, if I fall, this is going to be so embarrassing. So that's probably 
my scariest moment. But did you fall? No, never. 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 So it's fine. Sponge hob square pants. What is your go-to recipe? That's a stretch. Um, as me Lewis or as me SpongeBob? As you Lewis. <laughs> ratatouille. <laughs> of course, what else? Have you ever made ratatouille? <laughs> What's ratatouille? I don't know. Okay. I have, it's lovely. Very nice. And one of the best Disney films. Disney, Pixar? Both. Both. That's the next job. Yeah. <laughs> if you're watching. <laughs> Lewis for the ratatouille. SpongeBob prayer pants. Do you have any pre-show rituals? Uh, my pre-show ritual is actually jelly babies. I've got such, that's my favorite sweet. And if I have three of those, then I'm good. That's my favorite thing in the world. And my <laughs> pre-show ritual is nothing because I'm always the last person down that, <laughs> at that. beginners. <laughs> so I'm running, that's my pre-show. Just ritual. literally just praying to be ready. <laughs> yeah, literally, <laughs> like, every fine. day. I've often asked, where does Chrissy Beamer get the energy on stage? And now jelly babies. Jelly, honestly, yeah. jelly babies is the one. Like jelly babies, if you're watching, <laughs> we need a jelly sponsorship babies. deal for Chrissy Beaver. Thank you. Thank you very much. Plunge Bob Squarepants, when is the last time you swam? Oh, last week in Blackpool. In Blackpool. The, the, the sea is contaminated with sewage, but it was worth every moment. <laughs> SpongeBob Mayor Pants, if you were elected to office, what would be the first piece of legislation you would enact? Oh, that's a hard one. That's a one. hard one. You were not told to expect questions like this no. today. Um, I'm going to go for half price food everywhere. Everywhere. Because I love my food, me. Eat out to help out, that Eat kind of thing. Because that, that for Five Guys, was great. Um, yeah, you know what? I'd say just like half price on all clothes because I'm so sorry. <laughs> like, I'm, see, when I get into the sale, I'm like, you can definitely, I can definitely get that for half price. So. Yeah. Gay rights. <laughs> we love it. SpongeBob for queer rights. rights. Sorry, queer rights. Queer as well. rights. Thank you. SpongeBob for queer rights. SpongeBob Square Rants. What is your pet peeve? How mean do I want to be? <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I am one for like, I don't like a loud open chewer. So if you've got gum. Oh, yeah, we were talking about this the other day, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't like people who talk really loud on the phone in public places, in public places. I think. Yeah, I'm like, I'm sure they can hear you on the other side. SpongeBob self care pants. How do you take care of yourself on a busy tour? I've been going to quite a few spas. Ooh. Yeah, I say quite a few. I've been to one, but I'd like to. I'd like to get some more in the schedule. If you're watching this and you're going to let me go for free, that'd be really nice. Spa deals for Lewis and the SpongeBob yeah. cast. SpongeBob Spa Day. SpongeBob nice. Spa Pants. SpongeBob Spa Spa SpongeBob. SpongeBob Spa Pants. I really love long baths. When I find a bath, I love a bath and a face mask. Give it to me any time. So skin care. Skin care. Every when we could, when we could find our favourite like skincare routines, yeah. we're literally sharing them around we, the cast. Yeah, <laughs> literally, we do. Lewis said like a spa day, so I think this needs to be like a cast spa outing. Yeah, by the sounds, we of just it. need like the requests, like where the, the like the nice places that yeah. for a spa. Yeah. Tell us. SpongeBob Square Bants. Who is the? <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Who is the funniest member of the cast besides yourself? Thank you. Um, thank you for making that obvious. Uh, the funniest member of the cast, uh, I'd say Irfan Damani. Very funny. We share a dressing room a lot of the time and we laugh about everything. Ooh. I think you'd say yourself because I you think you're I hilarious. Would say my, I find myself <laughs> hilarious. I'm the kind of person who laughs at their own jokes before everyone else laughs. So I'm going to say me. But I'm going to say Sarah. Sarah Freer oh, is the is funniest, <laughs> and, but because she doesn't mean to be. That's why it makes it yeah. funny. So I just love her as a human yeah. being, and that's what makes her funny. Thank you for taking the time to join Thank us you. today. That is such a good idea. I love that. The cast are taking some photos. I've got so much china and glass in this. It's terrible, the amount of stuff that ends up in oceans and on beaches. Terrible. They're doing some cute photo op stuff in the background. Isn't that cute? Uh, but yeah, very heavy bag. Very successful day. Look, you can hear it. Successful day of beach cleaning. Um, taking a dramatic turn now because the tide is coming in. So we will leave soon, lest we drown. Right. So we've done our beach clean and for our efforts we're being rewarded with pins! Pins up between the bridges on the south bank. Ellie's here, he and some other creators as well. What happened to your sponge? Where's my sponge? Oh, my sponge has fallen. I was gonna say, can we make them do the, the Spider-Man meme? I literally did that with Lewis in my interview. <laughs> okay, so as well as the SpongeBob plushes, 
we got given these little SpongeBob mystery figures in slime. Look at these. So we're going to open them now and find out which figures we've got. I'm honestly very excited about this. Who's going first? <gasps> Do you get the, the it's shiny one? It's Sponge! You've got the Golden Sponge! Oh, oh you got the red! Gold Sponge! Wow! Wow! Okay, I got Patrick! Patrick. Oh, I got Patrick! Alright, let's see what's the third one. Oh, I got... I got Squidward. Two tentacles <laughs> and a fly. Yay, I love Squidward. Oh. Oh my god, hey! It has been a day, tiny people inside my camera, let me tell you. Oh my goodness, so much of a day, and so busy a day, professionally speaking, mm -hmm. uh, that I have scarcely had the time to take you out of my bag. I hope you have been sitting comfortably. I'm going to catch you up. We're in Wimbledon right now, yes. walking down the high street towards the new Wimbledon theatre. It is warm. It is, and it's approaching six o'clock. Uh, but the day started in Elephant and Castle, where we went to a launch event for the Barn Theatre Siren Sisters upcoming revival of Once, hosted by by a very handsome PR gentleman named Aaron James. Hello. This was your event. It was. Yes. It's very um, fun. Yeah. Uh, some clips from which you will have seen at the beginning of this week's video, if all has gone to plan. And then headed over to the National Theatre to do some work and mm -hmm. edit a video. And I'm trying to get a review out in to coincide with the lifting of a press embargo this evening, uh, which again, hopefully all will go to plan. But then, we got on a train over to Wimbledon and grabbed some emergency tacos from Tortilla, which were really nice. I've never train, had, I've never had, taco. yeah, I've never had tacos from Tortilla. I've only ever had burrito from Tortilla. Uh, but it's because we are on our way to the new Wimbledon theatre to go and see Charlie and the Chocolate Factory on tour, but also to have a tour of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory on tour. We're going for a little influencer backstage tour. So a day of many events today. And also one of the seams on my pocket has just disintegrated completely and my phone fell out of my shorts earlier. So it's, it's listen, it's a stressful day. Lots is going on, but I think that's everything. And I think I've caught you up entirely. If I seem a little bit manic. Oh, I've had a haircut. Oh yeah. So I hope, I, I, I hope you like, I like, and that's, that's really all that matters. Oh, they're setting up for the press night. I'm going to show you what the theatre looks like now. Here it is, the new Wimbledon theatre, where Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is currently playing. You can see the purple posterage, the purple bunting, and there is a hint of a purple carpet and a step and repeat going on out here. We're waiting by the stage door. If we pivot slightly, you can see it. It's I love there. that feeling as if we're going into like a theatre. You've done more of this than I have. <clears throat> I d to be fair, I've done t tons of tours, but also just like, because I work with theatres. I've done very few backstage tours, even like the ones that are like the publicly bookable ones. I just haven't done that many. They are really good. I really recommend the Nationals one if you've not done it in Theatre or Drury Lane. I've done neither. Very, very good. I've done, I even did a special Halloween one that the National arranged. Ooh. Which is very cool because they even like because you do like rehearsal rooms and stuff but it's set up like spooky special, tour special things so spooky, it was interesting spooky. because the national does not have ghosts no so no they're too young point. for ghosts give but, them time but the, they'll get ghosts well eventually. the thing is though the south bank is itself known for ghosts is it well because it was from lower marshes so it had like the plague and everything this is this is all news to me yeah. my ghost knowledge is really not what it should be my, my theater knowledge for weird facts is like quite high there you go there you go to follow me as you can see we're a little bit squashed in here so <laughs> amazing we're okay we're okay really serious no one's allowed to talk we're behind the set right now. This is crazy. You are looking at Augustus Gloop, who is at this moment in time particularly gloopy. Presented without comment. Squeezed in here. Normally on these I would take you into the quick change area, but we actually haven't got space them, so our costumes are all littered around the building. So there's not a quick change area as such. We just stepped onto the stage. That's the set piece currently on there. And then this is the view out the other side. You can see into the pit down here. Mm -hmm. And all these levels of the theatre. Where will we be sat later? I'm guessing there. I don't know why. Oh, my hand is blue. Blue. <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> we just stood on on the stage of the new Wimbledon Theatre, theatre I've come to many times, but on the set of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory with golden tickets. Just achieved a life goal I didn't know I had. This is magical. This is a magical experience. It's such a cool feeling when you're on a stage. It is a very cool feeling. Look at that auditorium. Just give me a little thrill. You're so cute. Just look at this. Look at this. How many times in your life are you going to get a view like this? Looking out at that kind of an auditorium. Where do you think we're going to be sat later, Aaron? <laughs> there. I guess there. And off we go. Back out. Admiring some more set pieces and props on the way. Fascinated by this. You can see some of the wigs used in the show. Suitably exuberant. Well, that was mind blowing. Just a brief little uh, trip backstage mm -hmm. of a show that we haven't seen yet. No. So now we're going <laughs> to we're going to spend all evening seeing set pieces and props and be like, ooh, yeah, that one. Yeah. There's the pig head. I yeah. Thinking of the show when I don't know if there's an obvious moment for the pig head, but I I both fear and look forward to it. So there you go. We're now standing outside. Um, getting ready to go in because the show is in about 45 minutes yeah. uh, and we think it's about to rain pretty sure yeah. pretty sure it's about to start raining it's one of those Dribbling a bit keeps being very warm and I think a thunderstorm is on its way also at some point this evening we're gonna have to buy chocolate we know this yeah. this is not a surprise if we're watching, we're watching a show about chocolate we're watching a show about chocolate and sweets we're gonna have to get chocolate we've just taken photos with the step and repeat I've pretended to be a model with my program Ooh. Ah. Uh, we're gonna go inside now because pretty sure it's about to be a horrible thunderstorm we've got the show timings here very useful very helpful and then we have balloons Plot twist, everybody. We were both wrong about where we guessed our seats were. We're in the dress circle. We're in D9 and 10 of the dress circle. I'm filming this from D9 right now. That's my view of the stage. And we are very ready for the show. Okay, okay, we're in the interval and we have found a Wonka themed merchandise booth. It's the Wonka Emporium. Love that. That's how you can see all of the prices of everything. I'm seeing pin badges, I'm seeing pens, I'm seeing more pin badges, I'm seeing socks, look at these. I don't know what outfit that ever goes with, but it's a fun sock, isn't it? We've got a little golden mark here, I love that, so you can see some of the more brochure. This I think is very cute, we've got a Pure Imagination t-shirt. It's a lovely t-shirt, got a nice zip hoodie there. Got a youth t-shirt, you can just about see there's a logo on the other side of that. A grey one here and a small beanie. for me. Salty caramel. We're going to enjoy these now. Thank you so much for watching this week's Oh My God Hey Again. Apologies that the audio was not ideal, especially in some of those clips that you've just seen at Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, but I hope you enjoyed the video nonetheless. I don't have Aaron with me at the moment because we're both taking the rare opportunity of a free weekend to visit both of our families, but he'll be back with me soon on Monday for more stagey adventures and more press trips and more interview opportunities. Wait till you find out who I'm interviewing next week. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of that content. I am going to do the little roundup summary bit by myself uh, so show highlight of the week backstage tour 
getting to stand on stage at the new Wimbledon Theatre was exciting. Uh, but also that SpongeBob event, that beach clean was so much fun. We had the best time. The cast are lovely. And I got really into the beach clean part. Food highlight of the week is a beverage this week for me because I've just discovered, I think it's called the Peachy Keen from Pret, which is like peach and a couple other things as well. It's delicious. I had it two of those five days that you just saw. Uh, changed my life uh, and it's lovely. So can recommend the Peachy Keen from Pret. This feels very sad doing this bit without Aaron. Let me see if I can get him on the phone. Hold on. It's rigging. We're about to find out. God, it's warm in here. Oh, I didn't do low point of the week. This may be the low point of the week, honestly. Sweating in a camper van, trying to get Aaron to answer WhatsApp. Yay! Here he is, everyone. Hello. Yay! Those aren't your new glasses. Those are your broken ones. Yeah. Yeah. The new ones are going to um, be delivered. Okay. New glasses debut pending. But Aaron is here. What was your highlight of the week that we have just experienced together? Oh, good question. Oh, one thing was the Mrs. Potts cookie sandwich, because incredible. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's obviously your food highlight. Um, but show a highlight... Weirdly, I got a swim into the beach clean. That's what I was just saying. Wasn't it so fun? Yeah, and it was nice to just like chill and chat with all of the performers and stuff because like we knew a couple of them, so it was really nice to just chill and chat. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I'm going to end this now because sweat is running down my forehead. <laughs> Literally, it's so warm in this camper van. I've made a horrible mistake. But thank you all for watching this week's Oh My God Hey. Um, please, please subscribe and enjoy this video to make this to make this stress worth it. The sweat's in my eye. Oh God. I hope everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For ten more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey. Thanks for watching. Have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>